Hi everyone. Um, <laughs> hi everybody. Um, thanks for watching the video regarding the GPS and the CCTV cameras. Um, just to be clear about that, I didn't get approached by that either of those companies to publicise their products. I simply went on eBay, found a reasonable price products, purchased them and took the risk on them like everybody else does out there. And they've both turned out really well. And you've seen the reviews and what we've done about that. Um, the company that um, supplied me with the GPS um, got in contact with me and said uh, we're really pleased with the video, they've obviously done well out of it and people have bought them, um, would I review another GPS? And I, first of all I said well no I've got a GPS and I'm not really into doing these reviews and they said all right okay and I said oh well, hold on maybe if you give me two of them and I can give them away to my subscribers. So this is what this video is about. I've got two more GPSs. They're um, the same operating system as the one in my previous video where you can program it to the size of your vehicle. They're actually classed as truck GPSs, but you can put your weight load in, your, your length and the height of the vehicle, um, as you do with some of the more expensive uh, systems like TomTom Tom and Garmin. Um, these are about £40 to buy, um, not particularly expensive at all, actually cheaper than the one I've fitted. These have got a 7 inch screen, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to do a review of them, um, show how they work, we'll do a test in the car and um, we'll run a competition um, at the end of this video and uh, I'll give these away to a random selection of two people, at least get one of these GPSs. Um, it is going to be limited to people who live in the UK or in Europe um, because that's only where the map system works for these GPSs. Um, so I'm sorry for the people who live outside those areas who watch my videos but uh, anybody who lives in the UK or in Europe if they want a GPS for those areas um, will run a competition at the end of this and you'll get to win one free of charge. Likewise, if you want to purchase one, um, I'll put the link down below and all the descriptions. And if you want any more specifications on this GPS as well, if you go to the um, eBay account and go into the um, description of this GPS, it gives you all the specifications on there. And if you're interested, you can read through that. But there's been a number of people that bought the last GPS and contacted me and said, oh, it's really good. I've got one. I'm really pleased with it. And we've tested it a number of times now and it's still working well. So really happy with it. So let's go on to the review and see what we think about these new ones. So we've just got them here. As I said, there's two of them. They're both exactly the same. Um, they come well wrapped in this bubble wrap type of package. There's the mount for them, that looks like a mount that you can stand it on. There's this mount which is a window sucker mount. And there's the power supply, the cigarette, cigarette lighter to run it off the 12 volts. USB lead, I would imagine that's for updating the maps and you can actually plug that into an USB, USB charger in your car or on your computer to charge it as well. There's the instructions. Does anybody ever read the instructions? But the instructions are there. A user manual. This user manual looks quite good. It's actually full of illustrated pictures. Oh, pictures with uh, narrative underneath of all the different functions. I know on the one I've got, which is supposed to be the same type of operating system with this, you can do all sorts of things like play photographs on it and play music for it and link it to your telephone, use it for as a, a hands-free device in your car. And on the screen it shows battery power, it's actually come with full battery power. It's got a clock on there which is wrong, it's an hour out, so that's probably set to you universal time, not British summer time calendar on there with the right date on and a navigational map. You have various multifunctional things on here as well. Sound effects on there. Yeah it looks to be the same operating system as the one I've got in my van. Simple to use, find address, put your town in, this is where you put your postcode in as well. 
Um, it was a bit confusing when I first got it because I thought, where do you put your postcode in if you haven't got a town? It's a nice bright screen. If you go into the settings, you can set all the different settings. Pick your languages, your volume settings. Master, voice, the ding, beep alert. So that's quite good as well, isn't it, really, when you think about it. So you can have change your overall volume or you can change the individual volumes of part of it. I really can't get over it, and I'm not saying this because they've sent me these to give away. Um, as I said before, I paid for the last one, but I can't get over how good value they are compared to those very expensive ones that you get from Tom, Tom and Garmin. And the main reason I was looking at something like this was setting the configuration for my vehicle so I didn't end up going down tracks that I couldn't get the van down or height restrictions with having the roof rack on or anything. And there's some of the other bits and pieces on here. You can set these in relation to your fuel consumption. So I would imagine you put in here your initial mileage and then you, when you fill up you reset it again and it does the calculations for you as part of that process. It's something I've not used. You can put an SD card in and you can play music from it. I mean, and there's an headphone socket on the side. Don't really know why you'd want to do that. There's the update side and there's a website on there for the navigational map updates. Now, there was somebody who bought one of the other systems and contacted me and said I can't work out how to do the map updates. Well, the ones that come from the supplier, because I emailed them and checked, were all up to date with 2019 maps. And these are supposed to be up to date with 2019 maps. And I asked them how you do the update and they sent me a link back to say the easiest way to do it is to use this link using um, Windows on a computer. And the guy who wanted to try to update his um, system um, also contacted and got the same information it wiped straight away. Even though that I think it was already up to date. So the SD card you can put in there and you can play your photographs back and I think you can play a video. And there's some trip information in there. Not really sure how that works. It probably gives you some indication of your when you've started, how far you've travelled, um, how long you've rested for. It's interesting, it's got nearly every country on here, but the maps are just for UK and Europe. So I don't know if you can actually buy these in other countries which have the relevant maps on. I presume it's just the software, the update for that. Again, if you go onto the specification or contact the people who are offering these, I'm sure they will tell you. I can't imagine they put all this information on there and not have it for all these countries. There we go. At last. Oh, and it gives you all the information on here. They're all in kilometres as well, so you can change those around to other uh, to miles per hour. So as I say, I'm in the house and uh, I've just plugged, uh, switched it on, so it's not actually got any satellite signal. Which is not surprising, really. User profile. Ah. So you can have more than one driver's profile linked into that. Interesting. Vehicle. There we go. This is the interesting bit. This is where you can choose what type of vehicle you've got. So if we go for bus, um, we can say navigational road on the road, route type fast, motorways. Yes, we'll have motorways. And you can put in tick or cancel these so if you never want to go on a ferry and um, you can switch that one off if you don't want to go on toll roads and it will calculate your route bypassing those relevant bits and pieces but what I've found is it if it can only go on those particular routes it will give you a warning and say this route includes X Y and Z calculates green alternatives Wow different settings for type of map as well 2D or 3D, automatic overview, colour settings, night and daytime, 3D ga vehicle gallery. Oh, you can choose which type of vehicle you want to look like. Car, pedestrian, other vehicle. <laughs> P 
For a cyclist on there, if you want to put it on your bike, well, I suppose you could take it out of your camper van and put it on your bike. Truck. I don't know if there's a big black van in there. That'd be funny, wouldn't it? Dun, 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 dun. Walking. <laughs> you can even set it to for a flying carpet. Well, you know. Marketplace. Oh, this is the bit I was talking about before. So you can have it listed to show accommodation, airports, automotive places, businesses, cafes, bars, community, finance. I reckon it'll get quite cluttered if you put all these on. Marina? Well, that's a good one, isn't it? Marina, because obviously marinas have facilities you can use and probably get water. Medical, parking, that's all right. Petrol stations, restaurants, shops, sports. Transport, I would imagine that's public transport. Oh, and you can save those onto the memory card as well. Or reset everything to default. <laughs> so you can pick your voice. So would you rather have a male called James, or a woman called Kate, or a male called Daniel? Or you can go for a different, you can go for an American male or female. It changes it to all them different languages. <laughs> Could be interesting. So this is the one I was looking for. So when you get into the settings, if you choose lorry or van, you can actually put your maximum speed. So you can increase your speed to whatever your maximum speed is. Of course, in the UK, nobody would go over 70 miles an hour because that's the maximum speed. Yeah, I believe that. Uh, and then with the length of the vehicle in feet. So how long is your vehicle? So, uh, I don't know, 20 feet. Um, how wide is it? Seven feet. Um, the height of the vehicle, um, nine feet. Are you using a trailer, on or off? Axles, how many axles you've got? Two. Um, maximum weight. Weight settings, what type of freight are you carrying as well? Look, poison gases, non-flammable, flammable. At least there's a setting for a whippet. Dangerous when wet. Mm. I wonder if there's a whip it smell smelly when pumps. You've got to agree though, for the money these cost and the amount of information you can put in this compared to those that are specifically designed for motorhomes so you can put your size in. It's incredible value. Now I thought when I got mine, with it saying June 18, 2014, that the maps was this age, but they're not. They are up to date, the maps on these. I have tested that. It's exactly the same functions as the one I've got. I think the one I've got is just a bigger size. It's got games on there as well. Look. No idea what that is. Oh, dear me. This bracket, as I say, fits on low. Clips in. There's a desk mount. And that's it. So you fit that on first, and then this bracket fits on separately, like so. So there we go. So I've set this sat nav up and uh, the one below, I'm in the Range Rover and one below is the built-in Range Rover sat nav and obviously the one we're testing today is the take one on the, the screen. Then take the next left. It uh, picked up all the satellites almost instantly when I plugged take it in outside. The, the map's very clear, bottom right hand corner gives me the distance to where I'm going to, time left, 
than the arrival time. And at the top left hand corner, I still left the plastic screen on, um, because obviously I'm giving this away and I don't want to scratch it or anything. But in the top left, the directional arrow is quite useful. What I've noticed on mine as well is it gives you, if you've got two turnings coming up quickly, it gives you the first turning and then another box with the other arrow in to show you where you're going next. After 1,000 feet, bear left. And this is a relatively new road down here. It's just had some alterations in, um, in probably the last couple of years. And it's picked up those new roads on here as well. So it proves that the, the map is up to date. Well, certainly within a year or so. Bear left. After 0.4 miles, enter the roundabout and take the third exit. I've obviously put the same postcode in both devices. Just that it'd be interesting to compare a very expensive GPS, I suppose it does come with a car, with a £40 GPS. I'm not surprised that it's functioning well because, it, it, as I say, it's the same operating system and all the same settings as the one I put in my camper van. I've tried that on a number Take of trips the third now. Exit. It's picked up all the shops and pubs and various things around here, showing a school, um, there's a shop up here. Interesting, that shop up here on the right hand side um, is a pub and uh, that's probably only been here a year or so, so that information is quite relevant as well. Now I'm up actually going to go to the destination because uh, I've got Louie with me and I'm taking him for a walk. I'm actually going to go to the Humber Bridge viewing area. I'm going to take Louie for a little walk down the Humber Bank. So let's see if it tries to, what happens when you take a, the wrong route. Recalculating route. After 0.4 miles, turn right. Yep, both GPS's have picked up the same alternative route. How quick will it realise I'm going the wrong way? Recalculating route. That's Take interesting. The, the cheap GPS recalculated fractionally quicker than the Range Rover. Recalculating route. After 900 feet, turn left. It's interesting, I set it to the tolls on the Humber Bridge, and as we're underneath the Humber Bridge, it's actually picking up the destination point on the bridge, which is exactly where the tolls are. <laughs> Just before I take Louis for a walk, I better tell you how you can win one of these two GPSs. Um, there's no cost involved. Um, I'll cover the postage, and as I say, there was both supplied to me free of charge, and I've already got GPSs in the other cars, and there's one in the van that's doing its job. So I thought it'd be great to give these away. Um, so how to win one. Um, in the comments below this, um, you need to be a subscriber, first of all. And that's really so that it's easier for me to find people who've, um, who've entered the competition if you win. And it's not about boosting my subscriptions, which always helps. But if you want to subscribe and then desubscribe after the competition, that's absolutely fine. I have no problem with that. But I didn't want to be in a situation if somebody won the competition, I couldn't find them to contact them. It'd be a lot easier if they're a subscriber. I can do it through my um, links on the computer. So a very easy way to win. All I want you to do is the comments underneath this video. I want you to put, I want to win. And if you put that in there, that enables me to pick you out. I'll list all the people that have asked the want to win and we'll put a number against them and then we'll use Google number random generation and we'll pick the random two numbers out and those people will win the GPS. I'll send you a message back through YouTube asking you to email me at my email address with your, your postal address. I'll box it up and as I say, I'll cover the postage and send the, the out to you as soon as possible. Obviously, if you don't win one of the two that are going this time, um, there is a link below 
they're just under 40 pound to buy and it's free postage so go on to the link on um, ebay and uh, get yourself one i don't know how long they're gonna last and how long they're gonna be but as far as i can see at the moment they work really well and they're so cheap compared to the programmable ones that you buy for your motorhome or your camper van or even your truck um seem great value for money i can't find a fault with them um i suppose as technology's moved on the prices come down and if you don't have the big marketing names on them they become cheaper so i can only recommend them from my experience and there's a few people that's bought them and commented on them already that they say they work well so if you want one buy one i don't get anything out of this i'm just trying to help people out and make uh, make people aware that they can save money on these type of things so the closing date for this is the 28th of june friday the 28th of june so as soon as you can put your comments below make sure you're a subscriber so i can find you 28th of june 2019 is the closing date midnight of that day and we'll do another video shortly after that to say what the results are pick the winners and we'll post them out to you and we'll cover all the costs in relation to that and thank you for everybody who watches me louis and joe on our adventures a lot more to come and uh, if we do get any more offers or any more equipment like this i'm quite happy to test it out and then give it out to people on the internet if if they're no use to me or if i've already got something thanks again for watching hope you've enjoyed what we've what we've done and uh, good luck hope you win see you all soon